So how I thought I'd do the um, this session is to do a presentation through PowerPoint for a portion of it, and and then we can have questions. I think that might be the best way forward. So I'll give you, um, you know, a little bit of my understanding of sleep. And um, I think over the years, um, actually, I probably went for years and years and years where I sleep deprived. Um, and in the last few years, I've made more effort to not be sleep deprived, and I can see much greater results in my Brahman life. <laughs> so, but um, I am an advocate of Amrit Vela, big advocate of Amrit Vela. In fact, uh, one of the reasons that I'm really interested in this whole sleep topic because I really believe that Amrit Vela is probably the most important time of our of our day that and Murli class, that's the most important. Um, and, you know, we don't want to be sleeping during that time. So, um, so yeah, that's why really I got so interested in this. So I, I will go to my PowerPoint and take you through that. So it's really about understanding and, you know, Often when I'm giving this course, um, you know, particularly those on the spiritual path will say, well, is this really a spiritual topic? And my response to that, I, th I would say it's a highly spiritual topic. Um, in fact, it's, a, you know, physical, emotional, mental and spiritual topic. It covers everything and probably... Um, we could sum it up in the line, um, you know, sleep, or if you get good sleep, sleep affects all your life. And all your life affects sleep. And so, you know, you, it's like a, a whole balancing thing that goes on. And, you know, you can't um, escape it, you can't escape it, you can Maybe, you know, if you're working on a project, maybe for one or two nights, maybe you can go and especially if you're younger. Um, but as you get older, you, you can't do that. <laughs> um, it, the repercussions are too great. And um, and I think even there's a kind of myth, that even if you're younger, that you can do it, because I notice actually that even the souls around me that are in younger bodies, they seem to need more sleep. So. Um, yeah, so it, I think it is really very much a, a spiritual topic. So um, to, to, in this little session today, we're going to cover, um, you know, bits of the research into the sleep process. In fact, the scientists are only really beginning to understand about sleep and what really happens in your in your sleep a lot in the last um, few years um, because they can measure brain waves and everything now so um, but it's there's some kind of recent things that I'll tell you that um, because I sort of keep my eye open if there's anything about sleep I because I'm interested in the topic and also because I have taught it you know in, in my locket job so I'm sort of doing my best to keep up with um, you know any new research about it um, but but also we know that thoughts and feelings and attitudes uh, have a big effect on your life, but it also has a, a deep impact on your sleep. What's what's going on in your consciousness during the day has a huge impact. And sometimes we understand that when we remember our dreams and the kind of sometimes the muddle that's in our dreams. And and but there are ways that we can start to you know, prepare our consciousness and subconscious mind before we go to sleep. And I think Baba's given quite a lot of material on this um, over the years, and we can use some of that. And and also how to develop a, a lifestyle that promotes a better night's sleep. So, you know, these are some of the topics, you know, obviously, it's a big topic. <laughs> and we've got um, an hour and a bit. So but, you know, still to make us a little bit aware of the importance of it is a good thing. So I'm just going to put up that there are some sleep disorders. And I'm, I'm not going to cover these um, 
these really, I'm, I'm really looking at the average person, how can they make more of their sleep? Um, but there are some conditions and actually, if you look on the third one, narcolepsy, I've got that slightly. So, um, but many people have insomnia now. Um, I know some PKs have got sleep apnea. It's like they, they will keep waking up because they have like, um, it's like a breathing dysfunction. Um, and yeah, so the, these would be considered more medical conditions and you might need some professional help with these. And there are now many more sleep clinics. Um, having, having said that, that I think there's many more BKs who've got narcolepsy. And this is when you, you, you fall asleep against your will. Um, I think for some BKs, it's become a sanskara that when they sit to meditate, they just fall asleep. It's like become a sanskara. And, and I think for some BKs, they've got a, a sleep condition. Um, and in some ways, it, it might be useful to those who do regularly fall asleep as soon as they, you know, not only in class, but literally they doze off a lot. It might be worth being tested because at least then you, it sort of sorts it out for yourself. Is it a sunscar or is it, is it, you know, there, there is a medical condition and maybe some medication could help. So um, yeah, yeah, but that, that's about all I'm gonna say for this. So understanding sleep. Move that just a bit. <clears throat> so yeah, understand it. So actually, you know, most of us we just kind of put our head down and we go off to sleep, and maybe we're not really aware. You know, we go to sleep and we wake up in the morning. We're not really aware of all the things that happen while we're sleeping. But actually, it's it's like a a, a high biological kind of maintenance that's going on. That's that's. Um, really helping your body to renew itself, to clear out toxins um, and during the night. And also there's quite a lot that's happening on a brain level. So, you know, this is one of the reasons that is so important to, to get a good night's sleep because it, otherwise it can have quite a huge effect, which I'll, you'll see on another slide. So, you know, they often say if it's your body's like a vehicle, Baba talks about you, the body's the vehicle and we're responsible for that vehicle we're just as much as we're responsible for putting the right fuel in it in terms of food and drink. We're also responsible for, as an adult, for getting um, the adequate amount of sleep that is needed so that the body can restore itself. And if we're slack on that, you know, Baba has even just recently, a couple of days ago, has Baba reminded us that we're, we're responsible for the body, you know, and it's like anything, if you keep driving a car and you don't take care of the water and you don't get, take care of the oil and the petrol, you know, eventually it's, it's not going to work. So, so, but also this, this line, you, you won't be able to work, learn or create or communicate at a level that of your kind of your potential true potential because if you're sleep deprived you can't it's just not you, you, you're just in a survival mode so there is a cycle um and this cycle happens several times during the night it's not just you have one cycle you go through several several cycles and this cycle is made up of different bits so it's like you have this 24 hour clock inside you, a sleep wake clock. Um, and, and it's the brain that, and the soul using the brain, I would say to, to uh, assess how long we've been awake and the changes between light and dark. So we've already got a little issue here because um, now we have artificial lights so sometimes that can be quite confusing for, you know, we have all these techie things, we have things with uh, blue light. So there can be quite a lot of confusion for the brain of when, when it is time to sleep. And 
Um, I'll, I'll tell you a story about that in a minute. Um, and so what happened in a, in a normal situation at night, your body uh, responds to the loss of day, daylight by producing this hormone called melatonin. And melatonin is what you makes you feel sleepy. So often someone who's got narcolepsy, there's too much melatonin. It's like producing it even during the day. So, um, so what happens, um, there's the, um, during the day, there's less melatonin and at night there's more melatonin. So, you know, sometimes this, this hormonal imbalance and we, of course, we know as we go through life, the hormones change quite a bit. And although maybe as a child, I might have slept really well, then as the hormones get all a bit messed up, then it can have an effect. And suddenly, you know, I've become an insomniac, <laughs> you know, so. So there's different types of sleep. Two main types. There's what they call the non-REM sleep. Um, and REM just means rapid eye movement, which is the other type. And this consists of four stages of sleep, each deeper than the, ne in the, than the next. And I'll, I'll, I'll look at those. And then there's the REM sleep. I put in brackets rapid eye movement because that's what it means. But these are these are terms known, you know, in in the kind of sleep scientist worlds world REM and non REM. And interestingly, in the second one, in the REM, it, it, they call it that because your eyes are moving a lot. You know, we don't know when we're asleep, but, the, you know, there's quite a lot going on for the body and also for the psyche, for the, for the mind. So the different stages of sleep. So first, you know, the, the, the non-REM sleep. And the first stage is like relaxed wakefulness. And this might be when you, you, you're in bed and you're putting your pillow right and you're starting to get comfortable. And it's like the, the, there's part of you that knows you're going to go to sleep. You're, you're, gonna, you're kind of relaxing into it, you know, making sure the covers is right. But you're, you're, you're kind of starting to relax. And then... Um, you know, everyone is unique in their uh, sleep pattern, but there's some kind of general things. So, you know, there's um, the next stage is everything starts to slow down. So the eyes slow down, the whole muscular movement slows down. Um, and, you know, if you think about last night when you fell asleep, you, there's a point where you just lose awareness that you're in your room. And you're suddenly not there. <laughs> you know, you're, you're still there, of course, but your consciousness is not there anymore. But in this level, you know, if there was suddenly an ambulance going by or a police car or someone calls out your name, you'd probably wake up. And then, of course, then there's this kind of light sleep um, that lasts for a little while. And... Um, it the bot the you know the different things start to happen more the eyes become quite still the heart rate slows down but the interesting thing is the body temperature decreases and that's why you do need like a cover on you um you know to keep you warm because there is going to be a, a drop during that time so when you go to sleep in the first stage you do need to feel kind of a little bit cozy because it's going to drop and then the third stage is what they call the deep sleep. And this is when it's difficult to wake someone up. And you've probably done that where you called out someone's name. They didn't hear you. You called again. They didn't hear you. You had to go and, go and kind of shake them. <laughs> this is that kind of level of sleep. And if we wake up in this level of sleep, if someone wakes us up or we, you know, you, you know, if you suddenly there's some kind of emergency, urgency you are disorientated you know it's like you, you you know it's like you this word groggy it's it's exactly right you feel groggy and disorientated and and the reason because at this deepest stage of sleep the brain 
waves are extremely slow and um and you feel groggy if you're woken up because the blood is not it's kind of flowed away from the brain towards the muscle so that the blood is restoring the the different organs the muscle tissue muscle repair and this is why it's so important not to um you know to to get the right amount of sleep for you and maybe there's a little bit of uh, experimenting to know what that is um, so that's why if you get woken up in this time it's quite hard because the the blood is not it's, it's gone away from your brain and so it takes a bit of time for that flow to start and that 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 while that flow is not there then you feel quite groggy um, so really when we look a bit further on you don't really want your alarm to be going off during a, a deep sleep. So we can think about that a bit later. But that's the main thing. You don't want to be waking up in the deep sleep. And I think, you know, if we if we haven't really understood sleep, then we might be on a regular basis, our alarms going off in the deep sleep, and we're not going to feel that great. We're not going to want to get out of bed. So um, good, good to know. And then after the, after that those four stages then we move into the a different it's a, a different kind of sleep altogether um I, i'm just going to go back actually because this bit where the blood flows away from the brain there's also a different process that happens when we sleep the brain and when we sleep then the brain when we wake up when we're awake it's almost like the brain does its cleaning out process its renewal process when we're asleep because it needs the blood not to be there to kind of clean out all the tissues so you know it's quite quite important that bit that's the new research so after um after you know it can be different times they're given the average 70 to 90 minutes so then we fall into a different level of sleep and of course then you know it's a different thing the body's really still but the mind is active you know, and it, it's that's why they call it rapid eye movement. So the eyes are active, you know, the mind is active, but the body is almost quite paralyzed. So it's a different and this this type of sleep is really, really important for um, it restores the mind, but also um, important for learning and memory. And I, well, there's another slide that covers this a bit more. So. Um, and that's the thing that often if you don't get enough sleep, you don't, your, your short term memory doesn't move to the long term memory. And, you know, we can fuff it in Brahma life, say, oh, it's because I'm living in the present. I don't remember. I don't remember. But I think maybe there's another reason why we don't remember. Because <laughs> we haven't had a chance for them to move from the short term memory to the long term memory. And certainly there's times in my Brahman life when I wasn't getting sleep. And it's kind of a vague that those years of what was really going on. So, um, so yes, sleep is really important. So this is quite interesting for us because, um, you know, the relaxed wakefulness is alpha waves. And then we have theta waves. And of course, in meditation, some of the stages <clears throat> of meditation, we definitely reach the theta waves. And I think when we've had, we're having really deep, you know, like uh, volcanic, <laughs> probably volcanic yoga, or, you know, you're really feeling in the soul world and you'll really feel you're taking a lot from Baba, you're probably in the delta waves. Um, but it's good yoga that takes you in, you know, you need good yoga to be reaching the delta waves. So maybe some of our daddies were, and maybe, maybe mama was, because her yoga was so good, um, and Brahma Baba, you know, they, um, they probably didn't need as much sleep because they were having consistently, you know, good yoga. Um, and of course, they there are models, but we might not be having that consistently good yoga because we're not getting enough sleep. So we have to really understand um, where we're each at. 
And of course, you also have to remember that, you know, Brahma Baba had God's power coming in, which, you know, that's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge thing. And I don't know the detail, but I have heard that actually Mama went to bed reasonably, wasn't she wasn't a late nighter. So, um, so I think that's why she could get up at two, because she was getting been good yoga and she was also going to bed early this is my understanding anyway so you know this this slide could be a bit depressing <laughs> so hang in there So let's just go back to that one. Um, just a few things to highlight. I'm, I'm sure we've all we all recognise um, all recognise some of this. You know, it's um, yeah. I mean, I can recognise these, and there's some kind of interesting ones. Um, you know, uh, need a nap to get through the day. Well, most of us are doing that. You know, unless you go out to work. It's like, you know, it's like some BKs, it's like, it's become like a religion <laughs> to have an afternoon nap. So, and, and it's not, there's anything wrong with a nap, but if, I, if it's absolutely mandatory for me to have a nap, then I have to kind of think a little bit, am I getting enough sleep? Or, you know, okay to have a nap, but can I go to have a nap at four sometimes or three sometimes, or does it have to be, you know, 2.30, I have to, otherwise I can't cope. So, you know, we have to understand this. Um, the other one that's um, kind of thing is, you know, it depends on your life setup. I mean, if you're going to work a full day and you have a locket job, then it may be necessary for you to go to sleep after Amrit Vela. So this, there's no kind of judgment in here. You have to work it out for yourself. Um, the, the last one's a kind of interesting one, fall asleep within five minutes of going to bed. You know, you would think that that's a good thing, but I think it's what it's trying to say is, you know, you're so tired that you collapse almost and you're not, you're a bit unconscious. <laughs> There's not even that restful kind of uh, restful, you know, wake, wake, what was it? Um, yeah, you're just not sort of rest, resting. You're not kind of getting ready. You're just kind of collapsing. Um, so I think we've all been through this. Um, I guess the scary one is when driving and I did have an instant where I fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> this is many years ago, but luckily, luckily for me, there was no one on the road at that time, but it was a bit of a scary wake up call for me. That's a pun, isn't it? Wake up call. Um, and that's when I went and got tested and I did have a little bit of, uh, narcolepsy so I um I do manage I do manage that you know I um in that I will be careful you know to, for me to drive somewhere and drive back in a day I mean I'll do it if I I mean I I did it I went to see my parents in lockdown and because you know I couldn't stay there so I drove down and there was um there was some uh, roadworks on the the road, so it took me three hours to get there because these roadworks. I was there for three hours visiting my parents and my sister and whatever, and I drove three hours back. And I tell you, I felt jet lag for about three days. So it's not a normal thing that I would do, and I probably wouldn't do it again. <laughs> so I often travel by train as a consequence of this condition that I have. Um, unless it's like an hour there, an hour back. It's long, long thing, unless I can stay overnight. And so I know I know for myself to drive in the afternoon is a bit challenging. And even on that day when I drove, I did stop at, um, on the way back, I stopped at one of the service stations and I had a little nap. So, you know, we have to kind of know our, ourselves and not put ourselves or anyone else in danger. 
So the effects of sleep deprived, again, this is, um, this is the telltale signs and not, not so good for Brahmin life. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you know nowadays um you know we don't want to be feeling this we want to feel kind of alert with it um full of life glowing um so there's some care needed let's go back to these um so yes so it's much easier to lack motivation and moodiness and irritability if you're not getting enough sleep it's like the you know I, I guess the ego enjoys a person who doesn't sleep well because they can use the ego can use you more, much more easily whereas if you've if you're refreshed and you're with it and it's very different but also some of the other things that start to happen you, you know the reduced creativity or just the the lack of um, zeal for life you know, and then when things get, you know, things, if you suddenly have um, a few things on and then suddenly there's time, time pressures, um, then, you know, it's much harder if you're tired to cope with the whole stress of it all. And the big one that that's important nowadays is that it reduces immunity. And we now know that how important it is to keep your immunity uh, high up concentration you see uh, if we're not getting enough sleep then it might be so much more difficult for us to have yoga and that's why I would say this is a highly spiritual topic and we want to fill our subconscious mind with you know beautiful memories of the confluence age and if we're tired and we're not moving these short-term memories into the long-term memories we we might not remember much of our confluence age um, weight gain, you know, that uh, there's a separate slide for that one. Um, you know, and this is where it gets kind of dangerous that, you know, if you're tired, then your motor skills, your ability to use your hands and your balance and all these things um, are impaired. And then there's more higher risks of things happening, accidents, tragedies. Um, decision making process is. Um, jeopardized and of course then all the classics you know of uh, higher risk of diabetes heart disease and other health problems and yet you know if we took care of our sleep then maybe these things are less likely so can an hour's extra sleep change you um and i would say yes definitely um, you know, you know, deep sleep sounds restful, but during it, our brains are actually working. It's the the brain is moving the short term memories to the long term memory, and and that leaves us space in our memory bank for more things to come in. And I guess we've all had that feeling where you know you're tired, and you just can't take in the information. You go to a meeting, you can't take in the new information. You know, um, whereas when you're alert, that information goes in and sits OK. Um, yeah, and that that's the, that's the kind of sad downside of not getting enough sleep, that you lose your memories or you could lose your memory because there's also a link now with some of the more um, uh, diseases of the elderly that are linked to sleep, Alzheimer's dementia so important Margaret, yes can you give an example of um a memory moving from short term okay yes yeah, it could be simple things like you know you were um you're you know you haven't had enough sleep and maybe you went out with someone and you you know just like there was some um some of the youth outside today and they were just playing badminton and laughing and you know enjoying and whatever and if you're tired, you know, that and unless, especially if you've got to a level of sleep deprived, that doesn't that doesn't move from your short term memory to your to your long term memory. So therefore, you, after a while, you, you don't really remember that, you know, you might look back over the last couple of years and you think, what did I do with all my time? 
don't remember things. So it could be, you know, just different things, but it also in learning, you know, if we're say trying to retain Baba's knowledge, it's going to be much easier, you know, if we might study a Murli. And if if we're sleep deprived, that is not going to move from the short term to the long term. So um, quite important. And, you know, even listening to the Murli in the morning, if we're kind of groggy, it's not going to it's not going to sit in the same way as if we're kind of fresh and alert. So um, I hope that was helpful. And, you know, there's this whole thing. It's like, OK, I, I'll manage the week and I'll, I'll um, catch up on the weekend, you know. And, uh, you know, they say it doesn't work because the memories need to be consolidated within the 24 hours being formed. So if I even one day I lack sleep, then there is a price. Price to pay that I might not remember things, some things. So this is just a few things of what the scientists are saying. Um, yeah, the same thing, it's not enough. Um, I would say, yes, if you could add an extra hour sleep to your sleep pattern, um, it's going to make such a huge difference on so, on so many levels. Um, and I think that maybe we've all been, oh, well, the service is really important. The service is really important. And so I think many of us ran around and gave our time to service and we, we weren't so aware of, um, you know, looking after the body. And, you know, and maybe we pushed ourselves, you know, we thought, oh, well, let me finish something off. Let me finish it off. And we pushed ourselves when probably we could have done that same thing the next day when we were fresh. So it's not that we're going to stop serve this, but it's just about when do we do the things, you know, because I've noticed, you know, if you're fresh, you can do things so much quicker, quicker than if you're groggy. So it's just about shifting things around a little bit. Now, this is a kind of interesting bit of research is that um, the pineal gland um, which is associated with sleep and the um, uh, the produce of or, of melatonin um, works better in a darkened room, and so if you're finding that you're not sleeping too well, you might want to get some of these blinds that they call them blackout blinds, and they block out the light. And in in my room, in one of the windows, because there was a window to the hall. And uh, as soon as someone put the light on, my room would just flood, flood with light. Um, and so I've got a blackout blind on that little window, which I leave down all the time now. So I can open my curtains, close my curtains and light comes in during the day. But that is always down. And, and so you might want to think that if you, you know, like things like um, um, there, there's one one soul who um, since a child, she hasn't slept very well and she's always had a nightlight. And I said to her, well, you know, the scientists are saying that it's much better for you to sleep if you, you don't have light in your room, if it's pitch dark. And it was, it took a lot to try and convince her. I, I can't sleep with that within a completely dark room. I said, why not? <laughs> so, you know, but she now does not, have a nightlight in her room and her sleep has so much improved she was sometimes going a whole night I don't know how she survived without sleep so you know just sometimes little changes can make a huge difference so you know something to experiment with is your how dark is the room when you go to sleep are you okay in a really dark room so something to think about can we get by on four hours sleep I would say no, unless unless you're kind of a super, super yogi um, and you're really, really up there in the soul world a lot. <laughs> then maybe. But I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. You know, I think that 
you know, if you can aim for six, it's much more healthy for your body, because even though you might be getting four hours sleep, you know, your body needs time to rejuvenate. So you may be, you may be functional, but you don't know the long term effects on the body. If you're only getting four hours sleep. So and just the link between um, sleep and obesity. Um, and they, you know, this is they've shown that poor sleep has a big effect on the brain and the areas that um, for um, complex decision making and response to rewards. And of course, when we're, we're not, when that, um, that there's an imbalance there, you know, it, it changes the, our hunger hormones. There's a change in our hunger hormones. So there's this, this hormone called leptin and leptin regulates the food so um so that kind of that when you you when you've got adequate amount of leptin you, you tend to you're cut off you know you'll eat a meal and you're cut off um where's this uh gremlin it sounds a bit like a gremlin doesn't it it's gremlin which it stimulates appetite and um, and so if you're if this is out of balance because of sleep, you will more naturally go for the cupcake. You're it's almost like if you're sleepy, you're more likely to want the tolly <laughs> in our language, you know, because you get a quick fix. You get a quick fix with the sugar. But of course, the downer of sugar, which that's for another day. <laughs> that's another another another. Um, that's for another topic. Um sugar the whole sugar thing but um you know really sugar is such a poison for our bodies and um yeah but and we tend to then you know if, if you're if you're feeling good and your level of leptin's good you will think okay i'll have an apple because that will make thing but if that's if that's all out of balance then your cravings go up and you know generally cravings for are sweet and carbohydrates so a cupcake would fill that that it might be a you know a BK cupcake, but it's still your you, you kind of want that for your quick lift. But of course, it's it's a quick lift, but then there's a kind of drop drop in energy again, and then you need something else to lift you up again. So this is some of the research: twenty four percent higher feelings of hunger, twenty three percent increase in appetite. 33% increased desire for high fat carbohydrate foods, making us feel that we have had insufficient food and thus encouraging us to increase food intake. So, so yeah, so, you know, um, yeah, we, we, sometimes we use food as to keep us going. We're not really hungry, but it's a quick fix. So we have to be a bit careful about that one. And this is kind of interesting. This is um, obviously a, a kind of a sleep. It's a sleep um, calculator. And it says, you know, and it, it tells you what times to do with the sleep cycles, because each sleep cycle is about an hour and a half. So, you know, on average, so if you're getting four hours sleep, you're getting two, two sleep cycles and a bit, which isn't work than that. And you could see that, you know, if two sleep cycles make um, three hours, then a six hours sleep is going to be great. So then you've had four cycles. So the. Um, um, but it takes a little bit to work it out. You, you may not be you may your sleep cycle may not be an hour and a half it might be you know um a bit less or a bit more so let's just go here and let's just see okay it's going into 
Okay, so here it's it, it helps people with their sleep cycle. If I'm if I have to get up at a certain time, what time should I be going to sleep? And this is, um, you know, this is um, based on that hour and a half sleep cycle. So let's say uh, we want to get up at four, four o'clock. Margaret, we're not able yeah. to see that screen. Oh, I've got okay. It on my phone. Okay, let me see. I'll go back. I maybe haven't shared it properly. Um, uh, let's just see if that helps. Is that different? Can you see it now? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so say you want to get up at four four o'clock a.m. So calculate. Then these are the times when it's saying to go to sleep. And I guess most the average is probably 10. Most BKs go at 10. So that would be six hours. So let's say, you know, you can just work it back a bit. Let's see if I can um, go back. Uh, there's a way of calculate again, that's it. So, which I think is 3.30 is when the music goes off in Amrit Vela. <laughs> I think it's in Madaban, Bam Ravela. So, you know, really 9.30. You know, I, I, I don't think many of us can go to bed at 8 p.m. And I certainly wouldn't want to go to bed at 11. Um, so really, you know, if we want to get at 3.30, we need to be thinking about 9.30. And that's, that's the actual falling asleep. And of course, we know in our lifestyle, there's a few things to do before you go to sleep. So um, it's it's really thinking about, you know, if I if I want to have, um, you know, a good amrit failure and I want to be up and have enough sleep, I need to be sort of thinking that um, this kind of time. And I and for myself, you know, how many times was I still in meetings at nine o'clock or coming from Global House at nine o'clock? I was doing all of that. <laughs> so let me try and get out of here. I'm just going to have to sh stop the share a minute. And let me go on to the next one. I've got sort of stuck in here now. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to go out and yeah, um, there's it. I don't think I've got it now. Okay. <laughs> the little frog, he can sleep with his eyes open. I just think that is quite amazing, isn't it? That they sleep with their eyes open. <laughs> Maybe there's some lesson in that for us. He's very relaxed. Um, but, you know, just to kind of go on a little bit before I, there's a few more slides, not many, but, you know, the, what is going on in our mind during the day is going to have a huge effect on how we prepare ourselves for going to sleep. And I, I'll come off the, off the screen and, and talk to you a little bit about some of the things I've learned about preparing for sleep, because that's what's really important for us. So it, I think one thing I learned when I was, um, I used to look after children and um, I realized, I, I started to work out that even for their afternoon naps, that if you had some kind of routine that let them know that it was time to sleep. So what I used to do was, and um, for the evening, uh, I would start singing a song to them, like about, 14 minutes before they were going to go to bed, I would start singing the same song. And so it's almost like they knew that it was time to go to sleep. And obviously there was a different, different song for, for the afternoon and a different song for the evening. 
but it's almost like that it, it kind of it's a bit like Pavlo's dog if you know about that it's like the you know they used to ring the bell and then they would feed the dog ring the bell feed the dog ring the bell and then you know they only had to ring the bell and the dog's saliva would come even if there was no food so it's a little bit like that it's um it's 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 um setting up for ourselves some kind of routine that lets lets us know as a soul <laughs> it's time to kind of slow down and also the body to kind of register the brain and the body to register so it might be something like uh at eight o'clock you turn off all screens oh it might be that you know you light a candle or or something that starts to tell you that it's now you're now moving into a different phase your day is ending and you're now preparing for your night it might be that you put on your night clothes you, you know that that might be enough signal for you to do it but the it, it's quite good to have um sleep routines and of course baba encourages us to meditate before we go to sleep so it might be that i have a routine where i you know i i meditate for a certain time and i write maybe i write something about my day my chart you know these sort of things are one they help us with our progress our spiritual progress but they're also part of a downtime routine as well so that also gives the signal for you know the soul and the body but both that now it's time I'm, i've moved into a different phase And so in a way, just from what I've shared, you know, what is your what is your own message about about sleep? And um, I can talk a little bit more about, you know, even food and drink has huge, huge impact on sleep. So, you know, it's much better to eat your main meal around lunchtime. And, you know, they, they talk about eat breakfast as a emperor lunch as a queen and supper as a pauper and I think there's a lot of wisdom in that so the earlier you can eat supper and the lighter that your supper is because you've eaten your main meal earlier in the day it's not always possible with your kind of lifestyle and work but as much as you can um, because then there's time for that to be digested what you don't want to be doing is eating and going to sleep because then the digestive process becomes very sluggish and of course, drink, drink, you need, you need to drink quite a lot of water. So I, I start really early in the morning. So even before class, I've already drank a litre. I drink another litre in the morning before lunch. And then I'm tapering off because I've had my water intake. You know, and, and because, you know, the body changes, you get older. If you don't, if you don't, then you'll be up in the night. <laughs> so. Um. And one thing you can think we can discuss more and one thing that you are definitely going to do differently to aid better sleep. That's just something that you can think about, um, you know, for yourself. What what would help you? What do you think is the message for you um, to help you sleep? And um, I think that's it, really. So I'm just going to come out there, stop share, come see you all, which would be nice. There's a couple of other things that um, is really worth noting and, and this whole thing about screens and there's a story I've got about this because when I did this course as part of my, my work, um, there was someone who came on this course who was saying he was really having a problem with sleep, really, really badly problem with sleep. And um, he was, he worked in IT. So he said the day was quite stressful and uh, and then doing this course and this exercise and you can do it afterwards you imagine that in your in your bedroom uh you're allowed a bed of course and you're allowed bedding and it doesn't matter if the bedding's under your bed you know the extra bed of course you're allowed a, you know a cupboard of clothes but you know again if you've got lots and lots of clothes that could be an issue because energetically um, you're allowed some, you know, uh, obviously basic things you need, toiletries and things like that. But it's worth checking what else 
is in your room apart from that. So that was the criteria. Those are the things that they were definitely allowed. And then they started writing what else was in their room apart from those things. And, and this, this uh, soul said, I've got computers, I've got like my tablet, I've got my phone. Um, and I said, why have you got them? Because I'm recharging them. And I, I said to him, okay, so let's experiment that you, you take all of your IT stuff out, you shut it all down at night and you, you recharge it in the room at furthest away from where you're sleeping. And um, he said, but I, I wake up to my phone, which I think is quite common now. People are using their phones as an alarm. And I said, why don't you just in, invest in an old-fashioned phone, you know, old-fashioned clock? I do not wake up to my phone ever unless, you know, unless I've gone somewhere and I, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Um, I'll take alarm clocks with me. So um, anyway, so he, he tried this. And he, he, he wrote to me, he said, you have changed my life. I now get really quite good sleep. Um, and, you know, I'll never put the, I'll never keep the screens in my room ever again. And this is an IT expert, right? And so it's really worth thinking about if you are waking up to your, um, to your phone, there's a lot, you know, the more you can, sort of have technology away from when you're sleep where you're sleeping it may make a huge difference I don't I don't have anything in the room I I I phone my my charges my phone is recharging but it's outside the room I don't have any technology going on in my room when I'm sleeping and that's even an afternoon nap so I have three clocks in my room <laughs> I remember once sister Gentia she came to our bath and she said Margaret you've got three clocks and I said yeah there is there's one that's for Amrit Vela so when I press the top of it, it automatically is set for the next so I don't ever touch that that's the only thing I'll do is put new batteries in but that that is already set and then there's a another another clock that is just for like if I do decide to have a nap it's a very accurate uh, digital clock but it's on a battery it's just a battery and then the other clock is like a daily clock that's just on the battery. There's no, there's no, nothing other than that. Um, and so it's something to think about. And generally, I sleep quite well. Yeah. So there's some questions uh, that have come in, I think. Yeah, Margaret, if you're done, I have a number of questions. Okay. Uh, okay, so you, you can ask. Well, let's go back to a few of your slides that you yeah. mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to carry on that conversation about short term, long term, but um, isn't it uh, um, like, isn't it nature that we, we do need to forget some things? Like, like what I'm saying is not everything uh, short term has to go into the long term, right? Um, I think you're right, but it's like when you it's like when you look back at your life and you can't really remember things. Like I, you know, I think there was kind of some hazy years for me when people people phone me up or they they came to visit me and I didn't remember. No, but my point is, I don't think. I mean, we can't attribute all that to lack of sleep, right? Like some things we are just not meant to. Yeah, right? sure. Point. But I think there's if if you're sleep deprived over quite a period of time, there's there kind of becomes a haziness about your life. Like if you yeah, think about someone like the seniors, they they remember a lot of detail. They do remember a lot of detail. Whereas, um, you know, um, that's what I'm saying is like when you you don't really remember much. Someone might be talking about an incident, and you were there at the incident, you don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you remember when we were on that retreat and we did this and we did that and you were like, <laughs> I went on that retreat? <laughs> That's the kind of... Well, many people say I met you there and I'm like, uh... <laughs> Yeah, so, so I think it's, I think, yeah, you can't possibly, you know, there is a kind of natural selection of things and we tend to, but often, you know, it goes into the long-term memory, but when we need to recall it, we can recall it. Right, yeah. That's but that's when you can't even remember. 
there's nothing to recall because it hasn't gone there yeah that's the difference and the thing is also they they talk about memory you know like um learning learning if we're if we're sleep deprived then we don't remember things and you know we want to remember we want to remember baba's knowledge we want to remember but we're we might do a lot of study and we don't remember because we're just, you know it hasn't gone in yeah that's so that, it's that this kind of thing yeah but yeah certainly your short-term memory that's the point you it gets moved from the short-term memory to the long-term memory so that yeah. we can selectively choose right and that but, makes but, sense. but that hasn't happened <laughs> Yeah, it's like a gap <laughs> right yeah is there is there such a thing as uh too much sleep yeah i think there is i think there is and um i think there's some conditions where you know um too much sleep um and i think that's why you want to you know if you can find out what your cycles are and in order to find out your cycles really you you need to give yourself some time maybe it's a time when you have a holiday period or something like that and you you go to bed at reasonable time and see what time you start naturally waking up. Um, so yeah, I think um, you can have too much sleep. It's better to have kind of cycles. And often, you know, if if there if there has been a period of where sleep deprived, then you may reverse into the other into the other side where you oversleep. Mm -hmm. It's not a normal, you know. I think the average, you know, like in worldly terms, they say average is about seven hours, eight, maybe eight hours, seven hours. Most people can survive on seven hours. I think most yogis can survive on six if they're having, you know, if they're making some effort for yoga. But six is say. quite reasonable. But when we get start getting down to five and a half, five, four and a half, danger, I think. Yeah. And also, as you said, what's going on in the mind makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. And if you know, and if you've had some kind of um, tr trauma, you know, and that trauma hasn't been sorted out, it, it's it's going to be pulling at you, and you may need, you know, or an incident that's happened, or a death of someone close. All these things, you know, I went through like quite a few years ago now, around about 20, 2012. And it really messed up my sleeping patterns. There was a bit of upheaval in me because of a situation. Um, and I could see it was, you know, I was waking up at odd times and generally, yeah. So I think when, when you know, unexpected events happen and things like that, it can really have an effect because it's having an effect on our mind. It has an effect on our sleep. Right. Um, what about dreams? Like, actually, some people want to remember their dreams. Mm. Of course, some want to avoid their dreams. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've had a lovely dream, and sometimes, you know, you get messages through your dreams. Um, and, and I think sometimes, you know, there's different kinds of dreams. I think some dreams are just literally sifting out the day's thing, and it, you look at the, the day, and it's kind of just a sorting out process but sometimes I think you get messages in your dreams almost like what you're not aware of what you're not alert to in the day um or you know what's you know you can get a message in your dreams um and I've had some quite vivid dreams and um and there were some messages in them and one interesting way of looking at your dream is that you are everything in the dream. So you, whatever shows up in your dream, that is, that's an aspect of your consciousness. Mm. So for example, that there, there was like one dream that I had where um, there was this, um, it was like a dark figure coming towards me, you know, and um and I had this baby in my hand, in my arms, and I knew it wasn't, I, I knew it wasn't my baby, you know, but, and there were some people over, I was trying to get them attention, their attention and saying, you know, um, you, you know, say, at least save the baby, <laughs> at least save the baby. And they were kind of like, they were sort of not aware of what was going on. And that, this dark figure's, coming and then suddenly you know it's like 
uh, I, I remember the, the dark figure sort of took over and like kind of dropped. And but I knew that I was still alive. Do you know what I mean? It was like a, a weird kind of dream. But there, I did think about it afterwards. What would be the baby? And maybe it's the purity. And, you know, it's like at least whatever happens, save your purity. <laughs> I, I don't know. You could go into these, but you're you would be everything in the dream. You would be the baby. You would be the the crowd that's not paying attention. You would be the dark figure. It's it's like it's not that we're just the one holding the baby it's like becomes everything there was this really classic dream that I had once and this classic dream was that um I was suddenly in a I was in a BK gathering this is many years ago I was in a BK gathering and suddenly I went to um the, the kind of cloak room I went to the cloak room you know where people hang their clothes and there was someone in there and I just felt oh they they shouldn't be there you know they're they're kind of going through people's coats and stuff this is and so in, in my dream, mind right? this, this is, is in the dream right and in my in a dream yeah and in my mind I said Baba and I suddenly was flying I was flying around the room and the person saw that I was flying and they were they got scared and they ran off and um and then uh, and I was like then saying thank you Baba thank you anyway so later I was at the same gathering, but I went outside and that uh, that that figure um, suddenly appeared again. And I, and I was like, oh, there's that figure. I'll fly. So, of course, I took off and fell flat on my face. And it was a kind of, <laughs> kind of interesting dream because I didn't remember Baba. I suddenly the ego took over. Do you see how there was quite a lot of lessons in it of uh you know, so in, in every dream, you are every bit of the character, you're everything. Mm. You know, so okay. the, the dreams are useful, but not to make, you know, I. Yeah, that's another seminar. You know, it's, <laughs> it's another seminar. <laughs> so now we've got this, we've got the dream one and we've got the sugar one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the sugar one's really interesting. <laughs> I'll just ask one other question before moving to yeah. questions I've yeah. also got. Um, so yeah, this thing about uh, technology, but also plugs. Uh, you're not supposed to have sockets around your bed. Yeah, if I if I understand correctly. So because a lot of people yeah. put their night light beside there. So how can you close yeah. that off if you have a night light? If you have a plug beside your bed, you can put a plug, one of those plastic caps, right? Yeah. So the current. Or, I mean, or, or, you know, you could just have it a bit of a, it's, I think it's round your head is the main thing. Not around your head, but it could be another place in the room. But then, you know, it is difficult because you, then you have to get up and turn the light off. A bit like Madaban, you know, you have to go to the other side of the room <laughs> to turn the light off yeah. and then go I back. I have these little um, things that you press. I have, I have those, you know, like you would. Yeah. Um, carry there are some battery like there was one yeah, in um you can get battery operated yeah. things that you just turn off yeah so um just and some light. people be more affected by that there's some people going to be more affected than that by than others but i think the whole uh screen thing a lot of people are affected and they don't realize mm. yes and i just want to add also like not to be on your phone and that light because that doesn't kick in the melatonin um yeah, 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 exactly. So, you know, don't read the Murley on your tablet before you go to bed. <laughs> Try and get, you know, a paper copy. <laughs> yeah. Or read it earlier, you know what I mean? Read yeah. it earlier. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, at night, do your writing. Because I yeah. think this is really important. I think this, the actual system that Baba set up of meditating, then doing your chart. So you're clearing out the day, really. You're, you're acknowledging, you know, what went well and what um maybe where you you know areas for improvement <laughs> areas for improvement and you're telling baba that and then you know baba says okay you know what did i learn what could i do differently and then it's like putting a close to that day because i think closure at the end of the day is so important that you know you feel like okay whatever happened i told baba about it you know um and i i'm i'm going to strive to do it differently tomorrow and that I think is all that Baba's requiring of us to be honest and somehow I know that whatever happens if I've written it somehow so Baba said quite recently he said write a diary and do a chart 
And I actually, I do that. I just write a little, you know, just write something to Baba. It's almost like keeps that relationship with Baba alive. Yeah. And then just a few points. I mean, I don't, I don't do the 108 points or anything like that, but I have a few points that are specific to what I'm working on in my life. Mm. That's what Sister yeah. Jessie mentioned uh, recently in her interview with us, that uh, mm. she keeps kind of a tab at night as a chart. Yeah. Okay, Margaret, yeah. let's move on to some of the other people's questions. Um, yeah. So is sleeping 1.5 hours in the afternoon okay in case we didn't sleep well the previous night? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and um, I think it's when you get to a feeling where you, you have to have it. You know, like sometimes I lie down and I might have a 20 minute nap and feel really fresh. Or I might lie down and I don't actually, I drift a bit, but I don't really go to sleep. Or I might just lie there having nice thoughts. So, you know, even sometimes just lying down, it gives your body a rest and you just have some really nice kind of yogic thoughts. And that can be really refreshing. But I think it's when you get to the point where you, you, you know, I have to have a nap, nap in the afternoon. There's no, there's no choice the, about it. The question might be like, does that those cycles have to be one after the next? Like, does it have to be six hours in a trot, or can it be four and a half and then one? Better, I, I would say, it's much better to have the six hours at night and less in the day. You know, like if you have six hours at night and you have like a little twenty minute right refresher in the day, it's m much better for you because otherwise you're sort of wasting a lot of your day. <laughs> You know, I'm saying people aren't question. having it at night, but then they're, they're they're two and a half hours of the day, three hours of the day. No, but let me go to the next question because I kind of relate to that. So you're getting up at three fifteen, doing Amrit Vela, uh, maybe a morning walk, and then Murli get to office, and you've spent like five hours, right, of your full energy. Then after two two or three hours at the office, it feels like your battery's down. So how do you overcome that? Because it's true, like I get up at sometimes 3, 3.15, 3.30 and have breakfast at 9. That that should be my lunch. <laughs> you know, God, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we all have to find our own way, definitely. And I don't think we need to become religious about this. But I think we need to find our way and, and start experimenting with things. And, you know, sometimes just stopping and having 10 minutes yoga might might do the trick yeah you know it's not always it's not always going to be that the body actually has to sleep yeah it might be and and i think sometimes you know in your lunch break if you can even you know if it's possible if you got your own office or you can do it behind the screen you just put your head down for a bit it might not be that you go actually go to sleep but you you're just kind of closing the morning and and starting again but it it's I think it's just we have to find our own way and I've I've found my own way and I'm now quite uh, I don't tend to want to do evening meetings anymore I did years and years of them mm. I just think I, I'm just my Amrit Vela is really precious to me Mm. And I want them to be good and sure. I'm striving for them to be good. And it, when you have a couple of nice, ex really nice experiences at Amber Vale, you think, yeah, this is the way to go, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. True. And also, may I add, like, sometimes if, if I don't know where you are working or whatever, but just to lie, just put the body like horizontal. I think that just seems to help. It's yes. a psychological trick. Yes. Yeah. And this, and if if any of you know the um, position for the Alexandra technique, where you lie on your back and you've got your knees bent, um, that right. is brilliant. That is brilliant. Right. So it kind of it it kind of really helps your back. So you're mm -hmm. you're lying you're lying on on flat surface with a, maybe a couple of books under your head so that your neck's at the same right level and then you're just bending your knees up as if your knees are pointing up in a triangle feet flat on the floor and mm. you just do that for 20 minutes it really makes a difference and you're not falling asleep you're quite alert actually you're having just nice thoughts but it really does a lot for your body mm. 
And then there's the one about putting your legs up. Yes, yeah, legs on the bed. And minutes, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. I remember when I was um, younger, I, I, I worked for someone, they had the slant board. And that was where you, you put your feet under this um, uh, bit at the top that held your feet there. And you were like lying um, sort of vertical at an angle. You were lying down at an angle. So your head was, uh, your legs were higher than your head. And that really was rejuvenating. Mm. So we can, we can set up those kind of things. And what you're talking about when you put your legs up. And it's basically allows the blood to flow to the head. Stand, if you do headstands, there's another one. <laughs> mm. But you, you know, you know, if you, if if you, if you're able to do headstands, that that can really make a difference. Mm. Okay, you here's headstands, shoulder stands. Headstands is quite skilled, but shoulder stands most of us can do. Mm, yeah. Um, so here's another question. I work from nine to six. And then after this is family time, kids and all that. So I don't have time for afternoon nap and mostly sleep at 11. So the only time I can sleep or have a little rest is uh, after Amrit Vela and before Murli, which is five to six. But then I feel guilty. Mm. Well, what's your thoughts? Um, I don't know if what makes you stay up to 11. You might want to address that, but it may be that's the only time you can... Well, kids and just family time. And yeah, family not. time. So I think then I would do it and don't feel guilty. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because yeah. because everything that everything moves on, you know, every every situation moves on. But you might want to address why it's 11. Why can't that 11 be 10, 30 or 10? I mean, I don't know your life, but you might want to yeah. look at the, why 11. Could it be a bit earlier? Maybe you feel you should stay up to talk to your husband or something you know I, I don't know what the situation is but I think don't feel guilty it, yeah. you know if that's what you've got to do to survive yeah. if you're working nine till six those are long hours yeah I think do it without any guilt whatsoever and, and you know and, know and life changes might be a different yeah. situation a year or two years time yeah and her job is can be quite stressful so yeah then don't, but don't feel guilty enjoy yeah. it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just remember uh, baba when you go yeah uh i'm not sure i understand this question once you get up you understand that you had good sleep is there another way easy way to know and is it possible to be aware of the moment before falling into sleep i think yeah and actually th that you've said a very very interesting point that i hadn't shared um i don't know if i quite understand your your question but i'm going to answer it in in a way and i hope it, it covers it the last thought we had is we have is so important and if you um this is really the what makes sleep so spiritual is that if we have more of the feeling that we're lying the body down um, you know, to be really appreciative of the body for all that it's um, allowed us to do during the day and lie the body down. And, you know, it's like the soul lying the body down. And then we become, you know, we become soul aware, very consciously soul aware and almost take ourselves a little bit above the, the body. If you can reach the subtle region or the soul will, fantastic, then go to sleep and then start to become aware of the first thought you have when you come start coming into consciousness because um and if it's not something that's quite pure change it just put something else in um and i've trained myself to become quite aware of my first thought um and to make sure that it's something quite high level and pure and and then you know um the first 10 minutes, um, the first 10 minutes of your day is like, if you imagine that's your prime time. So you want to be uh, having the most beautiful thoughts about yourself in those 10 minutes. Beautiful thoughts about yourself, beautiful thoughts about Baba, beautiful thoughts about your life. Not, oh no, I've got to get up now. No, that's just wasting that precious time. Just use that 10 minutes because that's very determined by what you 
you take into your sleep. And that's why, you know, have a bit of meditation, write your chart and maybe read a little bit of a paragraph of an Aviat Murli or something like that, or something that's quite highly spiritual because it's, it's setting your consciousness before you go to sleep. And in ancient times, like um, Roman times, they, they really wanted to have a high level of consciousness because they really wanted to have the great dreams. So, but for us, dreams aren't so important, but we want to, we want what's in our subconscious to be something pure. And Baba says, you know, when you're, you are becoming pure because your dreams become pure, but it's almost like if you imagine you're, you're preparing your consciousness for sleep, your, your consciousness, your subconscious, you're preparing your, yourself before you go to sleep very consciously that goes into the subconscious has an effect on the subconscious and then you start to become your subconscious will throw up something into your conscious mind as you wake up and when both those those ends are quite pure it, it, it can make a huge um, um, impact on your spiritual progress so preparation for sleep and when you wake up from sleep you can make fast progress if you pay attention to both those those times but of course it's also going to depend on the kind of thoughts you're having during the day you know so you know that's why i think all these things like traffic control and all these things are so important because they keep us a little bit above just you know the kind of mire attacks yeah very good very nice so that you know so you know even if <clears throat> those two things you pay attention to that you know it'll really help mm. and it's very nice when you start to wake up and your first thought is something like pure soul or light being or something like that you know it's come like from your 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 subconscious it's not actually that you've created it it's quite thought. amazing i think it's not even just the thought but it's the feeling like yeah just forward to the day it's absolutely just feeling elated yeah and it's going to be a yeah. great day something that's like that. it yeah nice okay just a couple more questions mm -hmm. um uh, how do you make your bio clock work for you so that you don't have to use the alarm yeah i mean that that's the thing is and and generally if you go to if you're getting your the, the if you're getting enough cycles for you as a soul, then you'll wake up naturally. I often wake up before my alarm. But you have to, I think, set the thought. Like I say, I want to get up at whatever, 3, 3.15. And, yeah. and somehow I think you're, as you said, conscious, subconscious listens to that, right? Yeah, sure, sure. But also if you are, if you're someone who, you know, functions well on six hours sleep and you're getting those six hours sleep, it's like yeah. there, there's part of you that's satisfied. You've got what you need. The right. You know, the body's done its job of cleaning out and restoring the, the brain. The brain has cleaned out all those toxins because the, the brain actually only cleans out the toxins when we're asleep. Because when we're active during the day, the blood needs to be flowing around the brain. So it's only really that the brain toxins in the brain the the excessive proteins in the brain is only at that time it gets cleaned out so when that bit is done and when your body's rejuvenated why would you need to sleep more it's done what it's got to do mm. so i think the answer is just uh, get enough sleep and the <laughs> clock will right set into yeah that's it that's it yeah. you know and sometimes okay sometimes you'll go all the way to your alarm that's fine no worries but Generally, if you're getting enough, you'll wake up often just before your alarm. Mm, true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in case of sleep deprivation, is it okay to get alternate alternative small naps at regular intervals to recharge? Um, I think you need to work out the sleep deprivation. I mean, I think it's much better. You know, the, the body is designed to get sleep at night and to always be working towards getting your sleep at night. But while you're on that journey to getting your sleep at night, if you need nap, don't deprive yourself of anything, but 
keep working towards and you know and the the beautiful thing about all this is you've got 365 days a year to practice you know it's like okay if i get it you know we all we all have to keep learning the lessons you know like one day because of a situation you may end up eating late at night because that was the service and that was the only time but i try i'd sometimes prefer not to eat <laughs> and <laughs> go to sleep and maybe have an apple or something i'd rather eat less you know because i know it has a huge effect on me so um you know but then you know if you get it wrong don't worry about it don't don't feel guilty about it you've got the next night to try and the next night and the next night so you know it, this is something for all our life it's not just a one off thing he's saying what if there's some people have night shift duty yeah that's that's very that's very challenging and you again you'll have to find what works for you but it does mess up those um the melatonin balancing acts so but what if you if you are um if you are someone that is on night shift you might want to think about those blackout blinds so that when you do go to sleep it is pitch dark and you're not trying to do it in the kind of daylight coming through your curtains you might want to make your room dark so that right. you're in a way that the mind is thinking that it's it's night time right and Mona saying a hot sweet drink was recommended by a vegan nutritionist to aid sleep yeah i mean some people use that some people play certain music um you know but then you need the old you need the old tape recorder time <laughs> <laughs> not on your phone <laughs> um but, just but yeah clarify this uh, other question i think i think we have i mean correct me if i'm wrong but these short naps it adds to the sleep uh, whatever irregularity but it's not a replacement for the deep sleep is it no 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 i think if really if you're getting a good night's sleep then maybe a, a 20 minute nap yeah or, or, or maybe you know they say 40 winks yeah but if if i'm having to have you know two three hours in the afternoon there's something not right yeah to me that's there's a kind of signal going on there that there's a kind of imbalance you know well you may need it the first few days till you get into sync right into yeah 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 but you might need to keep yourself up in the day to start changing that pattern yeah 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 and so you might be really really exhausted by nine o'clock but that's what you want you know, yeah. 8 30 or whatever you might be really exhausted because you kept yourself up but mm. of course you want to do these things when you've got a bit of a gap in your life and you're not you know having to really perform at a high level the next day and that's why sometimes during a holiday time you can sort of experiment mm. and things Mm. actually somebody had uh, told me years ago like if you do drink a big glass of water and then go to sleep then you will naturally wake up at the end of the cycle to go to the bathroom so yeah that way you find out what you do your... find out and oh. and sometimes i and that happens to me sometimes i wake up after the kind of three hours or something yeah yeah, yeah. that is a way of turning find out yeah. your cycle <laughs> We'll just take one last question, then we do need to end. And anyway, as yeah. Margaret said, not good to spend too long at the screen. That's it. Um, so this is a good question. When we have some unfinished task or something like pending overnight, then how is this going to affect our sleep? One of the things that I, I do is I, I write a note of what I've got to do. So like when I, um, you know, if there's something not finished then i will write a leave a note on the desk what i've got to do when i come in no but i think and that means that used to be i used to the stress mm -hmm. of it okay. yeah i i think um i think that is um um you see the thing is what we can do is we can push ourselves and we can finish the task and i think we've all done that um and there's a slight satisfaction because i finished the task but then i've I've jeopardized my sleep. So I think it's about where you can, you know, it's in a way it's better to get up in the morning and do it if you can. 
So I think it, but somehow it's sometimes I find if I write a list, this is what I got to do. This is what I got to do. And then, then that, and somehow I've written it down that this is really important. I got to do this first thing that that's enough that I know because there's always going to be an unfinished task. There's always going to be a to-do list. It never ends. So we keep pushing ourselves, keep pushing ourselves, keep pushing ourselves. And then, you know, we end up kind of um, depleted. So there's a point where, you know, we have to think, is it, and, and you know, if there's a one-off and you do it, it's not going to be a, the worst case scenario, but it's when we continue to start doing these things. Mm. You know, we get into habits again. You know, it doesn't take long for a sanskara to emerge. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, is yeah. it, it? You know, you start doing it a few times and then suddenly it's 10.30, quarter to 11. I mean, there was a time in my life I was not registering that it was like half nine. I was not really, I was sort of only 10 o'clock, I was sort of registering. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. And then there was a bit of a panic. But I, I'd start earlier now. I start, you know, it's almost like, although I might not go to bed it's almost like much earlier I'm nine o'clock I'm much more aware I need to move into kind of downtime now mm. yeah. and we we have like um you know everyone starts to meet at the kettle to get their hot water for the morning and that is in a way starts to become part of that um you know sleep ritual you know, you go and you fill up your water and you've got that. And these are these little things that you do every day. They start to be part of the ritual that tells you that it's time now to, yeah. to shift. And also start to dim the lights a bit and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe light a candle. You know, there's different things, whatever works for you yeah. to, to do that. Great, Margaret, that was fantastic. And uh, I'm sure everybody enjoyed and will take benefit and take heed. And thank yeah. you for your time. Yeah. And uh, well, thank welcome. you. Yeah. Good night.